About 150 years ago, one in four fighting in the Civil War died, amounting to some 620,000 deaths. Two-thirds were due to disease, not injury, and a full half of non-traumatic deaths were from diarrhea illness, unknowingly due to the contaminated water. The remaining non-traumatic deaths were from respiratory illness, particularly lethal because 90% of the soldiers were weakened by chronic diarrhea and malnutrition. That said, one-third of the deaths that came from injury would have been worse had it not been for the surgeons that became experienced during the Civil War. There had been radical improvements in weaponry at the time with new rapid-fire rifled muskets which caused cone-shaped bullets to spiral, giving an impressive accuracy at a 300 to 500 yard range. In the face of such deadly weapons, smart soldiers hid behind trees and rocks and earthworks, but too often had exposed legs or arms. It's no surprise limb injuries accounted for 70% of all wounds. These bullets tore enormous, easily infected wounds with shattered bones, pieces of clothing, and non-sterile skin pulled into those wounds. Most trauma surgery had to be performed within the first 24 hours after injury in open air field tents. The value of sterility was not yet realized and there was no understanding of clean instruments, clean wounds, or even clean hands. The world would have to wait 10 more years before Joseph Lister popularized sterile surgical technique and before the value of clean water was understood. One war reporter wrote, they would work for days without washing. As he waited for the next man to be placed on the table, the surgeon would stand back holding his knife in his boot or even in his teeth. Another description, the surgeons and their assistants stripped to the waist and bespattered with blood cut and sawed away with frightful rapidity, throwing the mangled limbs on a pile nearby as soon as removed. Without sterile technique to repair a wound, amputation actually provided a better chance of survival. Although there was no sterility, anesthesia was available during the Civil War. Ether had been discovered in the 1840s, and by 1861, chloroform became popular by field surgeons because it was less flammable, less nauseating, and more portable. Records indicate that during the entire war, general anesthesia was given 80,000 times with only 43 recorded anesthesia deaths. The reported screams coming from surgical tents were not from anesthetized patients, but from wounded soldiers about to have surgery. Then, as the war ended, some 15,000 experienced surgeons returned to their home communities all over the United States. Who would have thought that from the horrors of war, life-saving knowledge of anesthesia and surgery would spread throughout this country?